It started as an idea, almost a joke in some ways, to take a series of photos in an orange Russian spacesuit has evolved into a major channel and an opportunity to go to the moon. Yes, this is the story of Tim Dodd, AKA Everyday Astronaut. I've had the pleasure of interviewing him three times now, so I'll share some of my interviews and let's learn a little bit more about his history. Tim Dodd, born February 27th, 1985, is also known as Everyday Astronaut, and he's an American science communicator, YouTube content creator, photographer, and even a musician. Talk about a jack of all trades. He really gained steam through his space themed photo series and was then hired by the website Spaceflight Now. But in the last few years, he's evolved his YouTube to over 1.5 million subscribers and has become a beloved space personality on the internet. Tim Dodd worked as a motorcycle mechanic and a photographer where his main source of income was in wedding photography. That photography schedule allowed a lot of free time and he began to use it to take photos of rockets. Now 2013 is sort of where the everyday astronaut idea really began with that series of photo shoots. He purchased an orange Russian high altitude survivor suit, which was crucial for water landings in an online auction and later took photos of himself in that suit at a 2014 rocket launch in Florida. This was a joke. The suit became a kind of trademark for his YouTube channel. But that Russian spacesuit also caused a lot of problems for Tim Dodd in the beginning, including almost killing him. When he first got the suit, which was just a couple hundred dollars, he decided to put it on and didn't put on the helmet correctly, almost suffocating himself. He says he closed the helmet down on himself and locked it and didn't know how to unlock it. So as he started to run out of air, he realized he could unplug the hose and temporarily breathe through it. He's quoted as saying he was scared he would read his premature obituary like idiot dies alone in spacesuit in his living room. From that point on, like literally I got it out, I immediately try to put it on and the first thing that I do is almost die in it because I closed the helmet down on myself and locked it and didn't know how to unlock it. But obviously he figured out how to wear the spacesuit and then the photo shoots began. And just three years later in 2016, he decided to ditch photography and go full time on YouTube. He became dissatisfied with photography as a main means of employment and continued to pursue his everyday astronaut internet persona on Instagram and Twitter. In 2017, he created a YouTube channel covering spaceflight education and that became his primary occupation. Most recently, we know that Tim Dodd will be a part of the Dear Moon crew. He applied for this mission in 2022 and was selected to participate in a lunar spaceflight as part of the Dear Moon Project crew. This mission will happen aboard SpaceX's Starship and it will be the first civilian flight around the moon and Tim Dodd will be the first YouTuber to go around the moon. Tim's slogan is to bring space down to earth for everyday people and he does such a great job making content that's easy for all of us to understand whether or not you have a background in rocket science. Let's not forget too Tim has a giant army behind him in 2019 he transitioned from going solo to having a team help him and they do a great job including making great merchandise may I add. So I've combined three in-person interviews that I was able to do with Tim Dodd in this video. First, we're going to start off talking about his Dear Moon training, which actually hasn't started yet, but he, along with other crew members, are going to be going to the moon in a few years using Starship. I also show you something that not a lot of people have noticed about Tim. He was very surprised that I noticed it, so that's a little bit later in this video. And I hope that you enjoy just learning more about Tim Dodd because he has done so much for the space community, so let's get into it. My channel is approaching 100,000 subscribers, which is amazing, but with more people watching Watching my channel, more people are Googling my name with some pretty interesting top searches like Eliana Sheriff Husband, Eliana Sheriff Wikipedia, Eliana Sheriff Height, and what happened to Eliana Sheriff? I hope it's not bad. But to my surprise, some sites have had my address as public information in the past, which means that if I can find it, you can too, which is why I decided to sign up for Delete Me, and I think you should consider it as well. I just got my first report back, and to my surprise, 61 data brokers had my personal info, including name, age, address, and even some past addresses. So here's how it works. Delete Me submitted my removals from the data brokers on which they 
found my information. This privacy report shows each of the data brokers they've scanned, what they found, and what they're doing to remove my data. After they've submitted each opt-out, their privacy advisors go back and check each source again to make sure my information has actually been removed. Although all of my listings on the removal list will disappear within a month, some might be gone more quickly than others. Some data brokers you can opt out of online like Spokio, and they've already processed my removal within days, but slower data brokers can take weeks to honor requests. But even after removals are complete, Google can take additional time to remove results from its search cache. New data brokers will be added to delete me's list as they appear, and they will submit opt-out removals for my personal information to the new ones. This is why a membership is so beneficial, and you can even sign up for a family plan, which might be a good idea because so many of your relatives are linked to you. Better yet, Delete Me will do another scan and report in April, June, and August of this year. I personally trust Delete Me, and I feel so much more safe and secure knowing that I won't be subjected to the threats of harassment, identity theft, and worst of all, stalking. You can get 20% off Delete Me's US consumer plans when you go to joindeleteme.com slash LE20 and use the promo code LE20 at checkout. That's joindeleteme.com LE20 code LE20. And thank you, of course, to Delete Me for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back into the content. Well, and you know, you have a vested interest in Starship because of Dear Moon. How is that training going? Well, we're, we're waiting on this thing. You know, this thing has to make some pretty, pretty big milestone progress and changes and upgrades before we're even looking at crew, crew, crew accommodations, frankly. You know, it's like we're waiting. Hey, that thing could still change. Yeah. You know, there's still hardware that could substantially change between now and when, when we're flying on it. So, you know, SpaceX is taking the, the cautious approach of like, you know, there's some, I'm sure there's some stuff that's ready for crew obviously with human landing systems i'm sure they've, they've developed and have a a good hardware loop for a lot of those things but but frankly you know until that stuff's all more set in stone uh you know we're not we're, we're, we're waiting right well yeah. i mean we know that they've made up to a thousand changes in between the flights just on starship so yeah, yeah there's gonna be some fine tuning so yeah. is it is it true that you haven't started really any training yet other than knowing that you're going to be on dear moon that's pretty much right yeah we're pretty much just kind of waiting yeah so <laughs> It's, and once I think it'll just be literally like a, a flip of a switch thing of like yeah. we are at we hit this milestone, you know we feel like we are we now have the systems in place to actually begin a, a proper training regimen. Now I'm curious. I just did a zero G flight. Mm. Yes, I puked my brains out. <laughs> have you done zero G yet? I've never done zero G. Oh my god. Besides like in a little plane, like like ten seconds of like. But you know. you've also done the flip side, which is the high G forces. Yeah, I've done high G. How does your body respond to that? Pretty well, surprisingly. Okay. Like I, I, I grew up liking roller coasters and stuff, but I don't know if that translates, you know. And it for me, it, can. I think it's somewhat, yeah. you know, reasonably. Um, I, I didn't get dizzy or sick or any like no nauseousness both times with Jared. Do you get car sick? I have once, and oh. that's a weird thing. Once that clicks for the first time, right. like, I didn't know what people experienced. I was I was yeah. dumb. I was in the mountains in Peruvia, on my phone playing yeah. a game, that's what going happens. like this, yeah. and all of a sudden like it just clicked, and I was like, Yeah, this now is you know. horrible. So like I know now to like at least what that is and what to not try to do. Yeah. You know, and just have some. Keep your eyes at the horizon and stuff sometimes. So that was me 70% like of the zero G flight. Oh, so no. it's definitely not for everyone, oh, but no. um, hopefully you're able to, you know, get some of that training and it'll be interesting to see what kind of training you have for Dear Moon. Yeah, definitely. Do you think about that like every day? Is that still crazy to you? Not every day, but you know, when I do, when I stop and think about it and remember like, oh yeah, yeah, that's still like, that's, that's a thing that I have to like think about, you know, then it is crazy. Like, yeah. but for me, like I'm still literally thinking about like the next video I'm making. Right, you know? and, right. Like, like the daily tasks and the daily things and it's it's just like once that I, i'm trying to get as much of that stuff prioritized as possible now because as soon as that call comes in that we're going to be you know yeah, training you're going to be then it's busy. it's all out the window so right. it's like i i need to maximize and, and and do as much as i can now before that does take over my you know, it'll probably take over six months to a year of my life. And one of the things that you posted on X recently is that some people are saying, where did Tim go? Where's his content? Let's set the record straight here on Boca Chica Beach. <laughs> yeah, I don't, that, that's the worst. That is the worst comment because it means that the, you that frankly means that either the YouTube algorithm or my, or my audience is failing me because I'm still, I've been producing videos like yeah. every month for, since 2017. It's the same upload schedule. I've never, I haven't, it's like, I didn't change, you changed almost, yeah. you know what I mean? Like that's almost what it feels like to me. I, however, caveat, 
lately I have been trying to reach more, I'm trying to bring new people in. Right. You know, Everyday Astronauts' goal is to bring space down to Earth for everyday people. Get people that don't even know they're excited. So I have been trying some videos that are more of those like, hey, why don't they launch rockets from mountains? Yeah. Why don't they launch rockets from oh, airplanes? You know, like, I like more that. general things. And I think a lot of my audience, <laughs> they're teaching me things. You know, my right. audience is extreme. I love that. They're, they're nerdy. They know all the details. Same. And it's great. <laughs> it's incredible. But I do understand that those videos might not be for them. And I'm pretty sure the YouTube algorithm goes like, oh, you didn't watch this, this, and this. We're just not even going to show you any new content. Right. So because I had been doing more general, it's funny, I, I do a Starship video and it's like, there right. they all are. There's uh, everybody. Same for me. So which... it's it's hard because I don't want to, like, obviously I care about this. Yeah. Enough to invest my entire life savings into covering this stuff. Right. But there are other things out there and I do want to constantly bring people into this world right. and get people excited about this and, and understand this and appreciate the engineering decisions you know well you and I both don't have a background in this but I'm so impressed with what you've been able to learn and educate people and it really is it's it's a lot to take in and you know a lot of complex subjects here with with rocket oh, science yeah. and the constant decisions and keeping up with SpaceX's decision making is is a task of, of many observers I mean I it's funny I posted that video uh, about the changes that were made and my friends in a, a, a tank watcher showed me you know they, they have an article that's like a thousand times more in depth and I'm just like this is insane that people from yeah. the outside are able to gather all this information right. and then you think about that amount of info and then you think about the people behind closed doors what they're all the little changes they're making and all the little tweaks and all the decisions they're making for these trade studies it's just like I can't even begin to imagine. When you, know? you when you make a video that you know is kind of you know rocket engines 101 or whatever, very informative. Do you still find it hard to bring it down to earth and make it um, simple? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> but I, I I always have that, and and fortunately you you know from the Astro Awards we lost a, a valuable team member, a friend of ours, who was like the ultimate champion of all script reads was always like does the average person understand this and right. I still always hear that when I'm scripting oh. it's like it does the and you know it's funny because that to me like that was supposed to be my that was my gig right does the average person but he was always the the next level champion of that and so in Andy's honor I always remember like does the average person understand this you know right and so it's always a constant like and I'm always thinking about my family that like aren't aerospace enthusiasts right. you know my right. my nephews my niece you know like people that are just casual observers. Right. Will they understand the words that come out of my mouth? Yes. You yes. Know, and if I start there every time, at least it'll help be some kind of compass. Right. Will they understand what you're wearing? <laughs> Methyloxanorminal. Will yeah. they get it? Will they get it? If not, then I need to do a better job, you know? <laughs> Although those are fairly inside, you know what I mean? That's a little inside joke. -ish. Inside joke, yeah. But but the you space know, nerds get the it. The space nerds get it. Okay. okay. Hi. 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 Here's Apple calling you. Congratulations. Thank you. Are you exhausted? Oh, boy. Yeah. Hi there. <laughs> uh, I, yes, honestly, yeah. I'm yeah. quite exhausted, but uh, there's been a huge team of people that have, have helped out, and I mean, huge. Like, literally, I think there's like 25 or 30 volunteers here today. Wow. And people that, you know, have been working on this for months and months and months. So it's... You've been doing Astro Awards for a couple of years now online, right? Yeah, since 2017. All right. Oh my God. Yeah. So what is it like to have it in person for the first time? Surreal. Scary. You know, it's any, anything like this for the first time is like, is this going to work? You know, or, and what, what, did we, what did we forget? What did we... You know, what did we do wrong? What could we do better? You know, all these things are going through my head. And, and just even the, the live stream, the show aspect, like, yeah. you know, we're I'm still working on that stuff till 2 a.m. the other night. And last night after we we're wrapping up, I was still working on stuff like it's it's the first year is scary because you just don't know. And the hard thing is it's hard to communicate with people what we're actually doing, and what right. we're trying to do. I still have comments of like. How cool would it be if you invited the people behind these missions to get an award? I'm like, that's what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. That is literally what we're doing. <laughs> so it's been really hard to get that message across. And I think having our first year out, having people see that this is what we're doing, and we're bringing the, all these people in the same room together to celebrate and cheer and be excited for space flight, for space science, and actually like mingle and have fun together. You know, once people see it, they'll go, oh, that's what he's doing, you know? And I've wanted to do this because, you know, we have video game awards, we have cell phone awards, we have car awards, we have obviously movies and music. Right. Why not space flight? Right. And space science. Right. Like, there's so many incredible things to me that are even more worth celebrating and more worth, you know, actually important, you know, like right. really, truly important. So 
um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's so fun to actually see it come together. It must be crazy. I mean, you're an inspiration to me. I have a YouTube channel as well, and you know, I have a fraction of what you've built. Is this crazy that you, it all started with you know an orange spacesuit, and now it's? I mean, yeah, I would have never in a million years imagined. That's my my parents are running around somewhere, and I think they're just laughing, like you know, just like how is this? Right. What's happened with this? You know, because when I first stopped doing photography, I thought I think they thought I was crazy. Yeah. You know, and now they're just like I think they're just beside themselves. They were smiling all last night, so that was really fun to, to see I, them. And yeah. And when I quit news, some people were like, "Are you sure you want to leave the news business?" Uh, yeah. What is what is the difference in your community from you know maybe the first year to now? I mean, it's obviously grown, but what's fun is it's just become so much more mainstream. There's so many more people, and you know, a lot of that's just the popularization, the frequency of this stuff. You know, there's just so much more to see and, and witness and experience, and launches every three days and stuff like that. It's just more attainable for the average person. So I would say, just in general, the whole cake and pie and pizza has grown so that it's just easier to find the audience, find the community, and, and you know, it's fun to try to bring them all together and actually have people hang out. You know. Like this award show wouldn't have been possible a decade ago, maybe without the you know privatization of space. Oh no, no way! I mean, I would have loved to do it back then, but I we would have droughts of like you know five months with no launches and stuff, you know, or years without like a big milestone, you know. And right. So to have that like constantly, like you know, we're already like oh my gosh, this year like 2024 is what is potentially going to happen. 2024 is going to be insane. So it's like how are we going to pick and how are we yeah. going to do this, you know, already? So. It's exciting, and uh, I, I hope that people really enjoy themselves and, and feel inspired and feel excited about the future. Well, congratulations. I know this is a lot of work, and it's actually exhausting to interact with this many people, so good yeah. for you. Well, thank you. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. So awesome. have fun, enjoy the show, yeah. and hopefully I don't mess up too much. You'll do great. <laughs> thank you. Awesome. How, how is YouTuber life and, and being busy all the time? You know, it was... Uh, as I was mentioning to you a little bit before, honestly, it's, it was a lot easier when I was just staying at home working, you know, like during that pandemic was amazing. I could just sit there and crank out videos, but you know, a big part of my passion is actually seeing them launch and trying to, you know, bring that to people as well. So that's kind of why we made this van was an attempt to really try to up our production game because, you know, if I'm going to be there, we might as well like do absolutely everything we can to capture it and make it look good and share it with people so they can feel, cause people can't come, not everyone can, you know, come out to these things. No. So. We're just trying to share it and make it uh, as exciting and as fun as possible. I ran a quick Twitter poll and only 20% of the people on my Twitter feed had ever seen it launch in person. So I think it is more rare than, yes. I mean, I still haven't. Hopefully tonight, hopefully tonight. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, are your eyes two different colors? <laughs> they are, yeah. Okay, breaking news, I did not know that. That is so it's, cool. It's something that not that many people no. honestly have ever, like, uh, I've been shooting for, you know, years and years and years, and believe Have you noticed that? Yeah, and believe have it or not, like, I didn't notice not that, that many, uh, <laughs> okay. even in my videos and stuff, We're getting very, few, very few people have is ever noticed. Is that called a actually. walleye? Uh, I don't know. It's it's heterochromia is the actual term. I've never, I mean, okay. some people call them, like, huskies are, it's very common to have different colored eyes, so... Some people say like husky eyes or something. Wow. But, uh, yeah. Okay. Sorry to be random, but I mean that's that's really interesting. Yeah, it doesn't actually get pointed out that often on YouTube, like I said. So, well, yeah. we're we're here to make the interview different and not <laughs> ask the same questions over and over like what often happens to Elon. Oh yeah. And speaking of Elon, I mean, so many of you or so many viewers now know you and your channel based off those wonderful tours that you did. Tell me about like that experience and maybe some stuff that people don't know about that experience. Yeah, um, to be perfectly honest, like the first, so I interviewed him um, a handful of years ago at the Starbase event at the end of 2019 or the end of, yeah. Um, and then I also, um, uh, you know, interviewed him right during DM2, him and Jim Bridenstine in the firing room at NASA. And that, I'm surprised that interview was crazy for me because to me, there's like the administrator of NASA, you know, Elon Musk, and yeah. we're in the firing room, you know, the same one where the Saturn V launch directors and everything were like, and Elon, if you wouldn't mind miking yourself up there too. Sure. That'd be great. Right before the first crewed flight for SpaceX. Like it was, that to me was like one of the biggest opportunities and people weren't like as excited about that as when I walked through Starbase. And that's wow. when people, uh, really seem to appreciate the you know the the interviews and that was all that stuff was all Elon honestly that's yeah. just him saying like yep come on over type of thing and and I'm like all right can I you know can I bring our camera oh. 
It was amazing what you were able to capture. And were you nervous at all? Or you kind of knew him at that point. Yeah, I mean, uh, having interviewed him and, you know, run into him a handful of times, like, you know, you have some kind of, it's not just totally like, you know, first time or anything. You, you, the very first interview I ever had, that was my first time actually ever meeting him. So you can see my first interaction with him ever uh, in that very first Starship interview. But, um, you know, after that, you kind of get to the, I don't know, once you're, once you're around anybody, you know, you, you kind of get to be familiar with, their quirks and their personality and like what, you know, I don't know, it just it normalizes yeah. a decent amount, you know? He's your friend. At least acquaintance. Yeah. At least a good acquaintance, yeah. yeah. I, I, re I honestly being around him, you know, off camera and stuff, he's, he's actually really chill. He's really like, he's always working. So even when the camera's off, like, he's often just like answering texts and like, taking a phone call quick and it's just go, 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 go. And it's, you know, it, it's exhausting and wow. yeah. Yeah. But you're also always working, it seems, which is probably a lot. Are you, you know, what do you think about the emerging space tuber community, I guess? I love it. I mean, for me, like, I rely on these people now to, to keep, you know, keep up with the news. When I first started doing YouTube, like, SpaceX had, I think in 2017, I'm going to totally flub this, but I think it was only like six or eight launches or something. And like, so keeping up with space news was super easy. It yeah. was like, you know, it was exciting and you couldn't wait for the next launch. And now it's like, I, I completely lose track of it all. There's way yeah. too much going on. I don't intend to be a news source. You know, I like more of the, the long form mm -hmm. stuff. So I do completely rely on all these other other yeah. teams of people to, to keep up with this stuff because I, I can't do it. I don't really have the desire to try to keep up with it. It's exhausting. Yeah. Um, so I love like, it, it's so cool to see all these different voices and different people um, producing unique, their unique perspectives and their opinions. and. You know, I mean, it's funny because like I'm, I feel like I'm pretty, you know, friendly team space. Then you have like people like Angry Astronaut who his whole thing is rants, you know, and you have, you know, Felix doing daily stuff or, you know, weekly stuff. And you have NSF doing daily stuff yeah. and you have Lab Padre doing, you know, constant 24 hour live stream stuff. I mean, it's just amazing. Scott Manley doing, Scott Manley's ability to just do off the cuff, like sit down and just do these like incredibly like unscripted deep dives on a topic blows my mind. I am not nearly that smart. I'm not nearly that, uh, you know, just capable of just spewing out information like that man is. Uh, so I admire him a lot. But yeah, there's, it's just so cool to see, um, you know, I wish, well, I don't wish, because it's happening now, but you know, when I first started getting into space flight, there just wasn't any of that community. Yeah. There wasn't any of that, um, you know, there wasn't resources for these kinds of things. And I'm not saying that I started any of that. I think just the emergence of the new space era has done that, but I'm so happy to see it's picking up like that. It has become much more of a community. Throw in some questions, guys. Have I ever have... built a rocket? Have I ever built a rocket? Mm -hmm. um, By yourself? Besides a model rocket, no. Like, I, you know, when I was a kid, I would build little, you know, little uh, model rockets, but... I mean, like, high-power rocketry. Nope, no, nope, but I'm... Uh, if you're in Texas and are looking for some launch sites, there's a few out there if you want to launch something. Yeah. Or well, Friends of Amateur Rocketry in California. Yes, I've been out there. So I've been, I went out there last year for uh, Hot Nozzle Summer is what it was oh, called right. back then. And, uh, and my friend Joe Barnard goes out there quite a bit too with some of his rockets. I don't have time right now. <laughs> I would yeah. love to someday. You're a little busy. I know. Someday I'll, someday I'll settle down. What is your but... future aspiration? Future like, aspiration. Where do you want to get with YouTuber? I'm, to be honest, I'm beyond content with what I'm able to be doing. And I just feel so fortunate to be able to throw, you know, money at something ridiculous like an old news van <laughs> and, and be, you know, be able to go and cover this stuff in person. Like, that's a dream come true. I feel like I'm already kind of living, like, the dream, honestly, of, of what I want to do. But my aspiration, believe it or not, is to be able to do less of this stuff, at least less of the, right now I'm, ha you know, having to manage and spending a lot of time just, like, planning and building and buying oh my god like the amount of time we spend like trying to figure out research like which converter we need for this and that oh yeah is just ridiculous and it's inefficient so um i've been spending the last like three or four months has been literally like full-time building a production van and that's not what i want to be doing that's not what my supporters and my fans want to see me be doing um, so ideally, I really want to try to streamline and make the live streaming stuff just ready to go. And the idea is having it all set up in theory on wheels means we can roll up somewhere and set up and, and actually stream relatively with relative ease. Um, but my aspiration is actually just to get back to like being able to make videos more, you know, that's what I love to do. 
um, and not be traveling as much, but Starship keeps me way too busy. Yeah. Um, now throwing Artemis into the mix and Firefly into the mix and uh, who knows what else exciting things are going to be in the future. But, you know, I want to be, my goal actually is to not get burnt out before humans land on the moon again. Yeah. That's my yeah. goal. <laughs> it's just to, just to be able to be uh, at a good place and, and be able to uh, help share the, that new historic moment with people. Is like, that's, that's actually been a goal of mine for a long time. It's like, when I first started, I was like, I, I want to be like, you know, able to cover this stuff at, at Kennedy Space Center with, and be able to stream it. Like one of my, I actually pulled up when I, I made a video about making this van and I found one of my very first Twitch streams and I'm literally in the Twitch stream saying like, hey, I'm, I'm raising money and I had raised, raised $56 to try to make a production trailer. Cause I'm like, I want to go out and cover rocket launches and stream them and stuff. Oh my God. And you know, and this is kind of the, the version of that, I guess it is, it's a bit of a scope creep and a scaling issue and it's gotten a, a bit out of hand, <laughs> but it's so, here and we're, we're getting there. Sometimes you need to appreciate how far you've come. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's been, I mean, and it, it's, it's the dream career. I get to, you know, be my own boss, but unfortunately I, you know, I think anyone that's, you know, works for themselves, that's passion driven. You just end up working more that way, you know, and you yeah. end up not having limits on when to stop and when to relax and when to take a vacation and stuff so I think you've answered it in live streams because everyone wants to send you into space so you don't want to go to Mars right they all want to send Tim to Mars and keep definitely no, to Mars. no Mars no Mars no Mars I would you know this day and age and this changed after seeing like DM2 and seeing Inspiration 4 like I will now yeah I would go to space now you would go to space you go to I would go to space orbit. I would do Leo would you do uh, no. Dear Moon I, that would be really hard like I would have to evaluate like if given that option <laughs> i would you made a video for that right? yeah i made a video you know just sort of like casually thinking like obviously there's no there's no shot and frankly dear moon's been like radio silent so i don't think anyone knows at least i don't and i would definitely have to like really strongly consider you know what are you do considering I, wanna, I don't know the safety the mm -hmm. the yeah do i do i want that you know like do I, you know, I, the good thing is one of my concerns back in the day, and I'm seeing it now is not as big of a deal, but I was actually nervous back in the day that, um, that you would be like totally recognized, you know, all the time. If you were, you know, going back to the moon, I would be so nervous that you'd be, you know, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong where they couldn't walk or go anywhere, do anything. But I just don't think that's the reality of it today. There's so many people that have flown to space, uh, even, you know, commercially and, and inspiration for, you know, that still, uh, you know, they're just normal people and they don't get inundated by some space celebrityism, you know? So right. I don't think that would be an issue because I feel like these days people are like, oh yeah, people went to the moon, cool. You know, or like people went to space, who? Like, I feel like the biggest one for that was, um, was Axiom. Like no one, like I, none of my family or anyone knew that there was a commercial crew going to, or not a commercial, but completely private crew going to the International Space Station. They just completely went up there with no fanfare and they definitely don't have to live with those like, yeah. you know, it's just become normal, it's become routine. And that's, that's actually quite exciting to me, you know, is, is the idea of this all becoming uh, the next thing, you know, you don't think about flying and no one gets famous for riding in an airplane anymore. And <laughs> it's almost getting to the point now where people are no longer like, it's not a big deal to ride on a rocket, you know? Yeah, would you go on a Blue Origin? Flight? Oh yeah, in a heartbeat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they make that look so routine and they're, uh, they've had such a great record with that vehicle and their rigorous approach to to flying, you know, testing. They they've tested, had 12 virtually flawless test flights before they put humans on it. Like that was yeah. a rigorous, uh, almost totally. like obnoxiously rigorous test campaign. So I feel really, really good about that system. And I feel like when they do develop an orbital crew uh, vehicle, it'll, it'll likely go through the same ringer, you know. When, when you originally, you know, got that major interview with him before, like, I guess the one that didn't do as good as the tour for whatever right. reason, yeah. how did that, how did that come to be? That was Twitter. That was me being like, hey, I'll be out at the press site, pop on over if you want to, you know, say hi during our live stream. Because we were literally going to be right there and it was the pandemic. That was 2020, May 2020 was DM2. So there just wasn't a lot of, there wasn't a lot of press out there. There wasn't a lot of uh, hoopla because of the numbers. And, you know, he actually was just like, sure. And then what that turned into was like two days before or a day before uh, being like, hey, we're, we're actually just going to have you interview while he's up in the, in the firing room. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I will definitely prefer that, you know, and, and by the way, Jim Bridenstine, the NASA administrator is going to, going to crash your party too. Like, so we had him like jumping in and it was like, 
who, like, who knew that, like, you know, he'd get uh, interview bombed by the administrator of NASA was, was oh a huge surprise. God. So that was like, that was a bit of a panic moment too, because I didn't have, you know, more than two mics. Yeah. So for the interview, I literally just plugged in uh, uh, earbuds from to my phone and just recorded a memo on the phone. Luckily, like, honestly, just good old earbuds with that little microphone sound surprisingly great and you can't really hardly tell over the you know six hundred dollar wireless packs so pro tip <laughs> when did <laughs> you, you ditch wearing the suit um 2018 was the end of the suit era so i only made it about a year and a half of wearing the suit for sure i think i still produced some videos in 2018 that had the suit by the end of 2018 i was done what pushed it over the edge is i did a production with facebook so uh, Facebook watch production. That was like Facebook's attempt at being, you know, Netflix and, and having original programming. So we actually sold a show to, to Facebook, went around and did this big production. And that pushed not only like the character of everyday astronaut, like the idea of this goofy guy just out there, you know, running around, gallivanting around in a space suit, trying to figure out space, you know, pushed that character to the max. But it, um, <laughs> but it also took like the, the physical exhaustion of wearing the suit too much uh, all day. Cause some of those filming days were literally 10, 12 hour days of it being in the suit oh my gosh literally I, I hung it up and i i maybe wore it one other time after that and i have not touched i refuse it like that pushed me way over the limit you know just you can't exactly dry clean it exactly i like, was gonna say you probably don't miss wearing the suit not at all honestly and i feel like that was actually a pretty big tone change for the channel well, I, I came to this realization too around then of like feeling like i'm just over the suit and stuff and i'd always see those comments like why is this guy wearing a space suit or you know pajamas in his bedroom or whatever like i realized there's a non-zero chance like no one has ever clicked on a video that i make now and been like i'm not listening to this guy he's not wearing a space suit but yeah. the inverse of that is definitely true i definitely had people being like why would i listen to this guy he's wearing a space suit you know, yeah. so I was like, why would I possibly ostracize, potentially yeah. ostracize anybody? I'd rather it be obviously, you know, very obvious and open and, and a, mm -hmm. a fun, a fun and welcoming place. And, and it kind of helped set the tone to be a little bit more serious. I still want to have fun. And um, but I, I've kind of just focused on, like, just getting the information out there as, as efficiently as possible. And that space suit almost killed you. Is that one of the most scary moments of your life? <laughs> I've done other dumb things in my life, so I can't say. I mean, I got electrocuted twice trying to build this van because I'm Stop. dumb. Yeah, not big shocks, but like grabbed onto the. It was only, only thirty. It was a little tiny. Uh, there's a loose wire that, that just shows when the van is on, and like this is a little LED indicator. I just grabbed on, or uh, incandescent no. indicator. I just grabbed onto it, being like, what? Why is this loose? To plug it in, you know, just grabbed onto what was actually just totally hot wire. You know, oh like an gosh. idiot. Um, yeah. So I mean, I do dumb stuff. I'm I'm not. Uh, you know, I, I grew up like racing motorcycles and cars and stuff, so I've definitely had a lot closer calls with death. So nearly beginning to suffoc suffocate in a, in a sealed oh helmet God. was just par for the course, I guess. One of my Patreons says a few years ago, someone suggested Tim get a van to work out of. Now he is assembling a state-of-the-art mobile studio and a converted fan. What changed your mind on this? Oh, I had a lot of su suggestions from people saying I need to like do it right, do it right, you know? And like, I kept wanting to be like, I liked kind of just streaming from a car and like having a lightweight setup. But at the end of the day, like when we're, especially uh, Artemis uh, rollout, the first SLS rollout in March, we just had so much stuff go wrong. We shipped in like literally, I mean, what you see here is probably almost the amount of stuff that we shipped in was just an obscene amount of things. And, you know, we were just scrambling to put it all together and then we didn't have good connectivity. Our Starlink failed. We just didn't have any room for contingencies really, even though we did kind of have some contingencies. And so we had a totally failed stream. So I had flown, you know, myself and, and other team members out, you know, the rental cars, the Airbnb, all that stuff. Like it just got to the point where it was a total flop financially. And I just said at that point, I, we literally left. We actually, we were half making fun of seeing the vans, the microwave vans with a big pole like this and being like, can you imagine like beaming, you know, back to a, you know, setting up one of those vans this day and age of like live views and, and, you know, having just fully in the cloud streaming. And then Andrew was like, well, it would actually be really nice if we could just, we could just put all of our gear in the rack in there. And I was like, and I think Ryan Chalinski said something like, you know, and imagine putting a camera on top of that pole. And I was like, and imagine being able to just wheel it, you know, wherever we want to be. And that's, and, and then it just came to like, you know, the, it is actually a reasonable option to just build a van, you know? And I'm sure you don't regret it now? <laughs> I'd say I'm on the fence because it's been exhausting and it's been definitely like burnout fuel just to, 
just to the team that it takes to run this. You know, like the the idea of making money streaming is definitely out the window at this point because it takes like six people to do this. So, what is your advice to aspiring YouTubers? Oh man! Especially since it sounds like you kind of became an everyday astronaut a little bit by accident. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, the advice would first off would be start. Like people all the time, how do I start a YouTube channel? The answer is start. They think everyone thinks they have to have this big master plan and have to have a perfect video first. It's like no one's going to see your first video. I say the same thing. Yes. Literally like, word for word. No one will see the first one. So get your kinks out of the way in the first one. Yeah. People try to make these master plans and like these like master pieces for their uh -huh. first YouTube videos. It's like, no, your first ones are gonna suck. No offense. Like yeah. watch my first videos. They're terrible. And like it took me a long time to find the voice and the rhythm. So like the biggest thing you can do is get started, obviously. Um, but then the next thing to do is just follow, listen, listen to feedback, but don't let it be like negative. But there, you know, in the negative, like, and all that negative trolling and stuff, there is normally a nugget of truth. Yes. And I've had to learn how to like uh, filter that and, and help direct that in, into a positive way. You know, yeah. so when I see someone saying, you, you Dumbo, you should be building a van instead of, you know, <laughs> streaming from a Tesla, like, they're right. You know, I mean, I'm not <laughs> saying that like, you need to listen to all feedback like that, but at the same time, um, you know, there is, there's definitely truth to, to certain little bits, and it's, and it's important to, to listen to some of that feedback, but not let it, try not to let it affect your day to day. Yeah, because do you sometimes get trolls? Oh yeah, it's the internet. What yeah. do you like? Of course, yeah. There's trolls constantly, and you just I've learned finally at this point. Like I I, I, I actually love it at this. I don't love it. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't love it, but like I. You make the most of it. You make the most of it, and you actually end up like laughing at them, you know, for like trying so hard to like you know, take you down a notch or something, and it, it ends up being pretty funny. <laughs> that Mike's had like a... Was that lightning? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Good old Florida. So I'll just a fairly say, unorthodox interview, I feel like, because no, it's... it's hey, hey, it's all right. Beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> it's still rolling and you see both of us? Anything else you want to say? Let's party. Whether or not you were there for the first flight of Starship, you can have this commemorative IFT-1 design. We have these shirts and hoodies back in my store up and running. And better yet, we also have a design for IFT-3. Ordering merchandise is one of the best ways to support my channel, plus you get something out of it. I saw a lot of you guys last time I was at Starbase wearing my design, which is truly an honor. On this IFT-3 design, we focus on Ship 28 and Booster 10 and the re entry with the beautiful plasma field views that we saw powered by Starlink. So if you guys want to add either of these to your collection, the deadline is Friday, April 5th.